Hello and welcome to the Gamers Table Independent Game Design Series. This series will cover many aspects of the process of designing a game. Designing a game actually happens right up here and on paper like this and when you pick parts and that sort of thing. The Game Crafter has a lot of parts and different components that you can choose from, but at the root it's not the components that they have on offer that's going to make your game. It's your thoughts, it's your design that's going to make the game. You need to have a solid design or all the pretty parts in the world aren't going to make you have a good game. First and foremost, you're going to need an idea of some sort of game that you would like to play and you think other people would like to play. It might just be a card game. It might be a game with mats and tokens and money. It might be a game with a game board. But all of them have the same idea at the core, an idea. And to build that idea, you're going to need mechanics. I don't mean that people are going to fix your car. I mean, are you going to have people roll dice? Are you going to have people have tokens on the board they move? Are they going to have to collect cards? Are they going to need to get sets of cards? These are the sort of things that you need to think of. Maybe you develop some of them as you create the game, or maybe you already have the whole idea in your head and you just want to dump it all onto paper. But either way, you're going to have to get those set down into the rules document. Now, many people would uh, talk about different things, all the components of the heart of the game, or the board is the heart of your game. This is the heart of your game. And if you fail on this, you failed on every step. Why do I say that? For the very simple reason that if somebody buys your game, takes it to their gaming club, puts it on the table, and they start reading the rules, and they can't figure out how to play the game, or the rules don't make sense, or they contradict each other, they're going to put your game back in the box, and they're never going to play it again. And everybody who was there to experience that particular game is never going to buy your game, and is never going to tell anyone anything good about your game. So a bad rules document can destroy the whole thing. That being said, the rules document isn't the first thing you do. The first thing you do is get the idea. And uh, For this series, we're going to look at my game, Dino Hunter, and we're going to go through all the steps of creating a game using that as an example. As I do this, I will also bring up other independent games that we have reviewed on the show in the past or are going to review who have... Uh, Bits and pieces that illustrate well a well, point that I'm trying to make. I have two games on the Game Crafter right now, Lunar Markets and Filmmaker, that are finished, ready to buy. So you could go right after this show and run over to the Game Crafter and buy a copy. We'll start with uh, what I consider the basis of making a game is the layout. And I don't, by that I mean how does it all go on the table. If it's just a card game, do they hold all the cards, or do they put them down in front of them, and do they put them in front of them in specific places? If they put them in front of them in specific places, and they're going to have to remember that all the time, you might want to think of getting some sort of mat, just a thin sheet. And remember, these are always printed double-sided, and print on it all the different positions where the cards go and write them, and that also gives you a place to do a brief rule summary, a reminder sheet, because that's always good for people. A footprint is an outline that describes the actual shape and size of a part. The big thing about that is if you have the actual shape of this, then you can design based on that how many of these will fit on it without them falling off the edge. I mean, because we always want, we all want things to look neat. So you could set your footprint up and design it. So yes, if you line these up like this, these three things will fit on there properly with anything, nothing hanging off the edge. So let's take a look at this game board. It's divided into sections. It has, if I must say so myself, quite nice artwork. On the left side is a timer that is going to keep track of how many turns there are in a game. And you'll notice that some of these squares have a different number of players in them. So the game is actually set up to scale based on how many players are sitting around the table. And then down in the bottom here, we have places for some of the card decks to go. And we have a place for the cards that are going to be on offer in any particular turn to go. And we have up in the top 
the map of the game that is going to be able to change every time you play the game. And they're set up on one of the Game Crafters uh, folding 18 by 18 boards. Now the difficulty with one of those is what they give you is a template that does half the board. That's helpful if you're not making something like this that needs a picture to line up. If you do need it for something to, for a picture that needs to line up, it's a lot easier to design the board in one big 18 by 18 square and then cut it in half. We're going to use a little bit of Photoshop here. Now this template is available on our site, the, the gamerstable.info, in the download section. So you design your board as one piece, as we have here for Dino Hunter. Now you go into the canvas size, as we're showing you right here, and you say, yeah, well, okay, and here's the number you enter. You say, yeah, well, that's great, but every time I do that, it gives me that chunk in the middle of my board. I don't want a chunk in the middle of the board. Ha ah! Now, you see down here this square of arrows. What that's showing you is how it is going to affect the image that is there when it changes the canvas size. Now, if you do this, it's going to grab one side of the image. So you set the number, as I've shown you, you set this to one side, save as a PNG file, the left half of your board. Now you do it again, save the right half of your board. Now, you still have the Photoshop file of the full game board if you want to make changes, but you've cut it in half exactly where it needs to be done, so when you send it to the game crafter, they'll be able to make the board exactly that size and everything will line up perfectly. I find it's a lot easier to design a game board if you can do it as pictured as the whole thing rather than cut it in half, especially if some of your graphics are crossing that center line. And that is it for the first uh, episode of the Gamers Table Game Design. <laughs>